Hello and welcome. I'm Ben the Best Five, and I am coming at you with even more Kerbal Space Program content. Now I am sorry that in the last video, at about the uh, two minute mark, I in fact completely screwed up the audio um, and filled it with a whole bunch of static. That is because my audio file got corrupted, and I didn't realize until after I'd uploaded. But oh well. Anyway, so this video should come at you in full 1080p with decent audio at 60 frames per second for the first time ever, and it's my first video like this, so it should be really good quality, hopefully. Anyway, enough about that, on with the mission. As you can see here, I'm using my M-Class Launcher, which is my very first ever reusable booster type class of rocket, which I kind of like it. kind of didn't end up getting me into this whole business anyway. Anyway, um, yes, so I have in fact used this launcher to its absolute maximum launch capabilities. Also ignore me accidentally selecting targets, that was a mistake. Um, and yeah, this probe you can see here is in fact on its way to EVE. Yes, because our current mission is to head all the way to EVE and land a probe in the ocean of it. Now to do that, we don't need a lot, we just need a heat shield, some kind of a transfer stage, some parachutes and a power source. And we can in fact land our thing there. So we'll in fact be doing the majority of our burn to EVE, in fact using the upper stage, because the upper stage was initially designed to put payloads in orbits of the moon. Or oh, sorry, well uh, when I say the moon, I mean either of Kerbin's moons, so Mun or Minmus. So it was designed to do that. However, Eve isn't very far away from Kerbin, so transferring something from an orbit in Kerbin to an orbit around those two, around uh, Eve, is not particularly difficult. Which means I could in fact use this um, to do it. I could in fact also use. Um, the atmosphere of EVE to slow my probe down to land it and circularize it, uh, which greatly reduced the requirements for Delta V. Now, as you can see here, I am re entering the booster from my M class. Now, I haven't demonstrated this booster or this landing technique in quite a long while, so I guess I'll go over it again. Because this booster here is very, very lightweight and costs almost nothing to launch, which is why it's my favorite and why I chose to launch my my thing on it, because it's incredibly efficient, like I get half of, well, or I get $10,000 back from recovering it, and this entire mission only cost me $30,000, so I'm recovering a third of the funds by recovering this booster here. Um, this booster, as you can see, I didn't need to do a slowdown burn because it's nice and lightweight, which means that it in fact can use the atmosphere completely to slow itself down without being too fast to deploy the parachutes which means I can open up the parachutes and lower it down to the ground just like this and it will still function fine and we will get a complete recovery and apart from my N class of booster this is the only rocket that can actually do that because all the rest of them are too big which means that they need something to help them slow down and just because I can, I let it fall over and it took no damage, just because it's nice and small. Anyway, so, I went and set up a maneuver node to get to EVE. I didn't show the creation process because it's the exact same as the last time. Basically, I just created a maneuver node on the bright side of Kerbin and stretched it out until it was um, intersecting or well, near to intersecting EVE. And because I couldn't get quite perfect just off the bat, I made a small orbital change, small course correction, which put us on a collision course with Eve. Uh, however, I made a bit of a mistake, because the root part of the craft was in fact my... Um, uh, it was the, as you could see there, I it ran out of fuel and the maneuver node got lost and stuff. That is because the root part was in fact my 
um, the root part was in fact the stage below the upper stage not the actual probe which meant that we lost the data and stuff that's and all that yeah so I had to in fact recover and do something to still get us to Eve um yes so basically what I did here was I tried to to get back to the encounter we had before but that clearly wasn't going to work now since we were on a near Eve encounter I figured I'd just have to um, make a few small adjustments and here I figured we we're getting close so I just changed waited for a couple of orbits to where they are nice and close and from there I got a nice encounter and then I was able to drop my orbit in so that it would just pass through the very edge of Eve's atmosphere now because Eve's atmosphere is very very thick I in fact did not need to perform a large number of maneuvers to get myself on a collision course, well not collision course, a run through course of its atmosphere and still end up uh, on a uh, landing trajectory for EVE. Now as you can see here I, it took me quite a few attempts just because uh, I started to you know run out of delta V required at the end of my maneuver to actually get myself close enough to EVE and then I realized it was because I was performing quite a large number of expensive radial in and radial sorry uh, normal and anti-normal so as you can see here I in fact just reset that to zero there that's a that's a good trick if you have in fact accidentally set a direction which you didn't mean to do instead of fiddling around with the buttons to try and get back to zero you can in fact just go for that tab and cross that into zero and from there I in fact made all of my corrections with the um, um, with the radial in and prograde and retrograde markers um, not exclusively I did have to use a little bit of um, target normal and anti-normal but burn but they were rather minimal and as a result weren't as drastic as they were before and you saw me creating a circularization there I actually used that to just give me an indication of how fast I'd be going when I hit the atmosphere so I could approximately guess now I executed that burn and well time warp to it and executed it and we are in fact on the exact same course you saw me plan there I just cut it out because it was a bit boring and I well the stuff I had to say wasn't particularly useful so here we are going for a landing as you can see there I have that little stage there um, that was very useful and I'm in fact just using it now to slow down and I had to take multiple attempts just to land this in the sea uh, but that's okay uh, and basically what I did was I just set that to start burning at a particular point and just keep going till it got disintegrated and then at that point I just knew that that was the right, right amount of time to, to burn for so yeah I was able to land it there now you see there that I have a structural girder underneath the um, um, between the heat shield and the probe core that is there uh, basically for aerodynamic reasons because if it if it wasn't there and I just had the probe core there without anything helping it then um, it would actually tend to be a bit unstable and flip through Eve's atmosphere while it was going through the very top most parts of the atmosphere, the uh, least dense parts where it actually did the majority of its slowdown because as you can see here we hit it very fast and we, we are actually going upwards now through the atmosphere um, just checking here to make sure that you know we're gonna seeing if we're gonna leave the atmosphere or if we're gonna stay inside the atmosphere because we did hit very fast um, and as you can see there our blaze is running out even in the higher atmosphere after we slowed down a bit we are still uh, burning up ablator which is a bit of an issue if we do run out of ablator because if we run out of ablator in Eve's atmosphere then that heat sheet will burn in a few seconds 
and that will result in the rest of the craft being disintegrated almost instantly because E's atmosphere, well it's thick as you've seen as I, and I've mentioned so it would disintegrate under the high speed however, spoiler alert, we do make it to the surface but we do however have less than 5 units of a blader left over in our heat shield which is definitely a bit scary but you know, we made it, so it's all good, as you can see Yes. Also, I could have made this probe a little bit smaller and still completed the mission. I didn't have to mount all of the science to the sides. However, the science units are relatively cheap and don't add any additional weight and was not weight that my very small launcher couldn't handle, so I decided to add them anyway. Um, this um, rocket, I had rated it to carry about... Um, one ton of stuff to um, Juna as a result it could carry this probe to Eve which was about a ton although it required a bit of a bigger fairing than it's used to however it could still hold it perfectly fine in fact that the extra fairing wasn't much of an issue as it turns out so I could in fact transport this probe which weighed about one ton when it hit the atmosphere however by the time it re-entered it lost all of its ablator or almost all of its ablator which meant that it shed its weight down to only about 800 kilograms for it to land. And as you can see, we are going to splash down nice, on, nicely on Kerbin's, uh, Eve's, sorry, Eve's shore. And we, in fact, had two lots of science there. One that we could perform uh, in the atmosphere to get some science from the atmosphere biome, and then another set we could save for when we had finally reached the surface, well, I guess you could say surface, the ocean, ocean surface we'll call it, of Eve, so we could get science from there just because that biome is worth more science than, say, you know, the other biomes. And I did think about three because there is high atmosphere and low atmosphere, however, the probe couldn't, the lifting body, sorry, couldn't fit the extra weight. We did, when I say I, I pushed the limits of my launch vehicle to the absolute extreme uh, I, I did push the limits of my launch vehicle to the absolute extreme anyway we have now successfully landed which we, means we can deploy our well redeploy our antenna so that we can communicate with the Kerbal Space Center uh, you need to deploy that antenna or else it doesn't work but you need to undeploy it during re-entry or else it will burn up and now we can watch a brilliant sunrise over EVE in its green and purple atmosphere and we can in fact enjoy the even views I guess you'd say while I send off my scientific data to send that all important data home from our very cool very low cost EVE lander. You saw me just fast forwarding time there that was just because we ran out of fuel not fuel power so doing that just let me recover my power nice and quickly so yes yes some lovely views of Eve anyway this is in fact a good spot to say thank you move the camera around there we go yes thank you for watching I used to always kind of finish by looking at my cool probe I just put somewhere. Haven't done that recently, but because we've returned our Kerbals home every single time and not done satellites. But anyway, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.